Hello and welcome to the MBS show, episode number 369. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and we got a lot of news today, so let's hit right on to it. Yes, so in today's news, well, Mike Vogel and Comic Beat confirm Scooter Loose Ants are hmm, ants a same sex. Wow, that's a bad grammar there, Cal. But anywho, um, yeah, in today's episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, episode, what, uh, is, yeah, here is uh, episode 12, Last Crusaders, um, we are shown Skutulu's ant, and Lofty and Ant something, was it? Oh man, I don't remember, episode just came out today, so I fully don't remember. But the thing is, um, they were an item. They were a cute couple. And Mike Vogel has been hinting at it for a while now. Uh, saying that, like think here, here. Um, when I say cute couple, I'm saying that Aunt Holiday and Aunt Lofty are a cute couple. Yes. So this was what? Uh, October 11, 2017? So that's a while now. That that's a while, like what three years ago? Seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. Yeah, probably three years ago. So uh, the reason for this was that uh, Scootaloo's Ant was first introduced in the My Little Pony novel. Um, which one I don't remember. I think it was starting the CMCs or something like that. Yeah, it, it's been it's been a while. It's been a while. But that was, or that is where they were first mentioned. And as per usual, anything that happened in the books may not have crossed over to the, what you call this um, series. But apparently, this one does, and it seems that they're canonized. So, anywho, um, a few weeks or a few years later, um, MK Toon. Just reveal saying, hey, hey, at Nicole DeBunk and Josh Haber, I think they they are the writing stuff for this season. And what did I say? Um, okay, uh, Nicole DeBunk, Josh Haber, and I doing what we can to bring more equality to Equestria. Hashtag Pride, Pride Month. So, yay, it seems that, yes, they are an item yay awesomeness I, I i can't say much because I, I don't know what to say it's cool and not only that it seems that other places are picking it up and yeah uh let's see uh, but, uh, uh everything is okay, okay 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 so buzzfeed is one place that's picking it up and i don't think other places are but still it seems that um, the topic of same-sex couple is kind of booming everywhere because um, Arthur, the teacher character, oh wow, I forgot, uh, BuzzFeed has the article here. Um, it, this shows a lot of things, but I'm just going to scroll down because we know stuff. Okay, um, yeah, last month. Uh, season 22nd season um, Mr. Redburn from Arthur with his husband so that was kind of wow and in all honesty this one here like um, this one yeah this one yeah um, Mr. Redburn here I've watched Arthur when I was a kid and sexuality never really came into the line like or it didn't matter when I was a kid watching the show it's always the kind of interesting cartoon growing up. But anywho, um, knowing this, it's kind of like, wow, really now? That's interesting. So, yeah, that, that's cool. That is something cool. You have to appreciate that. And if I do remember right, the other thing that's going around the circle is uh, She-Ra. Uh, yeah, this new She-Ra. Uh, I forgot the character's name, but... They're same-sex couple there too. So that's pretty interesting. 
And yeah, oh man, I I don't know what to say. Honestly, this is just out of my league to talk about because um, over here in Malaysia, unfortunately, um, how do I put this? Same sex couple or same sex marriage or whatever it is is kind of frowned upon on. And if I do remember right, it could be illegal from what i understand so yeah uh you can say it's a backwards country backwards thinking or whatever it is but i have to deal with it you don't or if you're from malaysia then you have to deal with me but still it's one of those things where can we help the government Eh. so yeah it's one of those things where in the show they're kind of progressing in that mindset so that's awesome but you know, honestly, I, I don't think that the show is focusing on that. They're not really aiming at oh, look at them, they're a couple. Ooh, wow, wow, we wow. Because over here, you can't really tell. You, you can just say, or you can just tell that Aunt Lofty and Aunt Holiday are just good, uh, 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 just brothers and sisters. Sorry, not brothers and sisters. Uh, sisters. Um, that's why school will call them ant because well they're related yay makes sense right and yeah the show doesn't really show that they are a couple but if the writers say so i guess it's true canon right but in a situation like this where a show is going to be um how that would it a show that's going to be shown in multiple countries where um, some beliefs or yeah some countries or yeah some countries don't share the beliefs of others like for this one um, same sex uh, marriage or same sex couple or something like that Um, for how ponies did it it was pretty sneaky because you can't really tell that they're a couple they could just be Sisters living together, yay. So yeah, that's kind of interesting. I do remember um one thing that a patriot of mine told me that um one episode in Steven Universe was banned in China because of the whole um same sex relationship. So yeah, by doing this they avoid that because it's not blatant in the sense that hey look at me i'm with this other person of the same sex so yeah they avoided it in a smart way i should really move on before i put my foot in my mouth i got no idea so anyway yes this is awesome um episode was awesome today's episode was awesome and you know what i can't wait to review this one because we're going to talk a lot about it because yeah, you know what? I'm not going to share my thoughts now because there's a lot. There's a lot. So, anywho, let's move on to the next topic. And yay! I've been waiting for this one for a while now because I share the same sentiment as a commenter on EQD. And uh, where was this guy? I, I think he mentioned something about... Um, Ooh, wow, more comments coming in. Can't find his comment. But anywho, uh, long story short, I've been waiting for a long time for the um, Dazzlings to come back. So, (laughs) um, what happened is, a few uh, days ago, there is a music video special with the Dazzlings. Um, You know how Equestria Girls upload videos with how do I put this um, you know short songs or something like that and in their I won't say latest because it's uploaded on another website yay uh, it's not on the Hasbro's website so anywho um, the Dazzling has this new music video the song was not bad it was really cool it was re- it was really awesome and I think it's in here Yay, I've been waiting for five years for this. I too, my friend, yay. 
So anywho, um, Dazzling had their music video. It was a nice song. They upgraded their looks, and yay! It was much fun, much awesomeness. Like, if you're a fan of the Dazzling, go watch it. It is really fun. So it seems that uh, Nick Conflone, uh, story editor for Equestria Girls, uh, tweeted that. Um, what was this? A music video released a few days ago. Blah, blah, blah. Apparently, it's just a teaser for a full special involving them releasing some time in the future. Okay, so I can't wait. There's going to be a special involving them. It's it's going to be fun. It is going to be a lot of fun. I, you can clearly tell that I'm really excited. I don't know what to say, man. Like, oh, man. Five years was it? So okay, the thing is, if you love the Dazzlings, uh, Adagio, Aria, and also Sonata, their only appearance was in the Rainbow Rocks, um, special movie. Yeah, Rainbow Rocks movie. So it's just there, and there's nothing beyond that. So if you want to get anything out of those characters, fan fiction. So. I've read a lot of fanfiction involving them. It was pretty cool. Some funny, some serious, some sad, some joyfulness, some whatever. There, there, there is a lot of fanfic involving them. But now, here we got some kind of conclusion to their character arc. Or at least we get to see what happened to them after the uh, Rainbow Rocks uh, special or movie. So, one of the few good things is, yay, we get more content, we got to see more on an official capacity. But the downside is, all the fan fiction that are out there or have been produced of them within the five years that they existed may be null and void. But the good part here is, you can always say alternate universe. Doesn't matter, non canon. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, I here for one am very happy that this is happening. I can't wait to see where this is going, when, when this is going to happen. And yeah, I, I just want to watch it. I, I just can't wait. It is going to be a lot of fun. It is going to be a lot of fun. So, we move on to our last news. And this one is a pretty cool one. So a French company by the name of E. Nabel has created a Rainbow Dash hand hand. Yeah. So this company here does uh, 3D printed prosthetic limbs, or in this case, prosthetic prosthetics hand for children. And a blurb on their website mentions this. A second, yes. Um, okay, here you go. Um, normally, a prosthetic arm will cost between six thousand to ten thousand US dollars for fa for many families and individuals. This sum is a huge burden, and according to much needed, and eh, no, sorry, in accessing a much needed product for growing children, they may need new prosthetic every two years. For from age 5 to 12, then every 3 to 4 years from age 13 to 21. This means for the first 21 years of an individual's life, they could spend upwards of 100,000 US dollars on new prosthetic arms slash hands. So, um, this is one of those cases where that's kind of pricey and um, that is kind of nuts. And we, lucky few um, who have full working arms, don't really feel that. That we don't, we, I, I, you can say that we take what we have for granted. For some people here, they don't have hands, they may need to use help like a prosthetic arm. And from the article we read before, it may cost from six thousand to ten thousand 
dollars, sorry, one hundred thousand dollars, whatever it is. So it is hell of expensive. And with this, what what they're doing or what they're trying to promote here is an alternative to make things cheaper or so. And you know what? If you can 3D print your own arm, that is kind of cool. Um, in all honesty, uh, if you do get your own 3D printer, that's going to cost a lot. But initially, it's going to cost a lot up front. But in the long term, it's going to cost less because you don't have to spend 6000 to 100000 or even 10,000 or whatever it is on an arm on every two years or every three years. Like they mentioned, as the kid grows older, they need to upgrade. With this one here, you just buy the printer, you just buy their kit, and voila, it's done. And in honesty, I, I, I can't say much because I have working arms, I have working feet. Um, thank God for that. But yeah uh, can't say much man like this is kind of cool and yeah this this is awesome this is really awesome and who knows right um there, there, i i forgot there's another company that does something similar to this i'm not 100 percent sure what they did but they do video game themes or movie team prosthetics uh remember uh, Battle Angel Alita there was that girl with the prosthetic arm like Alita she got that one so that was cool or um, the one with uh, Robert Downey Jr. presenting the kid with a uh, prosthetic arm so that's kind of cool so this thing here or the tech here it's really awesome and now with this being available for everyone not really everyone. I mean, is making prosthetic arms available and cheaper for the people who really need it. And you know what? I I'm thinking about it. If you do have a business and you do have 3D printing, you could use this to kind of add in to that, uh, what you will call this, um, yeah, financial, whatever it is. Because... If you have a 3D printer, just buy the kit to do this and print arm, print the arm away and then it'll be fine. And yeah, it is cool. It is cool. If you already have a printer, uh, get the add-on. It's really fun. It's really going to be awesome. I'm shooting myself in the foot. So yeah, I, I can say much. This is awesome. This is just awesome. But in all honesty, how do this work? Because in my mind, if you have a prosthetic arm or something like that you hook it up and then like there's oh man maybe i'm thinking like um like you put in some cables or something like that you you know like how they do in science fiction but over here i don't think so it's not that advanced if you can 3d print yourself an arm 100 percent sure yeah shooting myself in the foot that's a theme for this week's episode so anywho so that's the news for this week and you know what um what have i been doing with my week so in all honesty this week has been rather dull um i've done really nothing much in terms of entertainment or whatnot like i mentioned that i wanted to go watch godzilla but i didn't have the time to do it it's one of those things where sometimes things get in the way and you know what there's two movies that I want to see now um, one is Godzilla and the other one is Men in Black International so that's going to be a fun one to watch I, I heard my friend mention that it's going to be it was fun it was fun for what it was and honestly I just need the time just need the time to go and watch a movie other than that uh, things have been pretty sameish playing a lot of Overwatch a bit of Street Fighter and just Magic the Gathering and stuff. So things have been pretty same-ish. Uh, other than that, 
nothing much really things have been going pretty slow I, I i really have to do some things other than the things i've been doing you know try to expand my horizons and whatnot uh, but hey um other things that are cool and have been going on is uh, some of the convention scenes uh, if you guys are in Southeast Asia and have the funds go to my buddy's convention uh, Daniel Anthony he runs the Friendship Express oh no oh wow that's something yeah kid oh well yeah so this is one of the few things why live shows are not awesome yay mm, yes Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm hmm. I love kids. Mm. <laughs> wow. So, this is one of those things where you don't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, live show, everyone. Mm. Yeah. So, anywho, where was I again? Wow. Yeah. Um, stuff doing new. <laughs> I. Oh wow! Yeah, man, I I can't remember anything now. I should probably jump to the end, but so I'm I'm guessing you're probably wondering what happened. So the thing is, um, my sister sometimes sleep over my place, and uh, she has kids, and the thing is kids are still young I think one is five and the other is three something like that so they're really young and yeah they can be random love them but can be really random so sorry about that I can let's just say that yay YouTube exclusive you guys get a video version well, kind of close to that. To that. And the iTunes version will get nothing of this. It'll be cut. <laughs> so consider yourself lucky. So anywho. So I'm, I'm guessing that I should try something new and stuff. And yeah, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Oh no, I, I was talking about conventions. Yeah, so where was I? Yeah. Daniel Anthony, my buddy, he runs the Friendship... No, not the Friendship Express. Project Siponicon, yes. That's his convention. And it's happening in the Philippines. So... I'm not 100% when it is. I haven't really put out the notes. This is just kind of spontaneous. So, yeah. If you are in Southeast Asia and you want to check out a convention... And if you're in the Philippines, that's awesome. But if you want to travel to the Philippines, go check it out. Um, I am not sure. Probably I will come back next week with the dates. Or you can just go to um, siponicon.com. Yeah. So it's there or project siponicon.com on the Twitter. Something like that. I'm not 100% sure. It's there somewhere, I guess. So go check it out. It's fun. Daniel is an awesome dude. Oh yeah, uh, to keep up, Daniel, I, I met him here a few days ago. We we hung out, we talked, we talk a lot. Of we talk a lot. We talk a lot about video games and stuff, like all the dumb stuff that video games are doing. So yeah, it was a lot of fun. But anywho, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at mrgmail dot com. You can also us, <laughs> you can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at MBS Show, and my personal Twitter account is at the Rom at Norman Sanzo. Also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and search radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on Live dot com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe and rate us on iTunes and stitch. No, sorry, um. Do follow us on iTunes and Stitch Radio for the MBS Review and Discussion Podcast. Over there, you get to hear me, Silver Quill, Sephir Heart Song, and Totera review the Pony episodes, comics, and movies. And sometimes we like to do other things. Most recently, me and Tara 
went on a talk about video games season nine yeah we, we just talk about it a lot and yeah um I, i'm guessing this week you guys get to listen to our first review for season nine episode one and two the beginning of the end much awesomeness so yeah that will be around this week woohoo much awesomeness if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's added access to review and discussion podcasts, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I would like to thank Amy, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Jeffrey, and also Master of Lag. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. So anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll catch you guys next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya.